Terry Caliendo here again for Dedicated Managers. I want to thank you for sticking around with me uh, this long. I'm actually uh, backtracking here. I skipped this video, but as far as if you're watching these videos in order, um, I, uh, I need to talk about ViewX. And ViewX is kind of like the global storage area um, so that you can share variables between all your different components. And I kind of talk about it a fair amount in, in the other videos um, as you can start to see how, how things get shared a little more um, uh, concretely, but Vuex um, is basically it, it's this this intermediary storage object um, in the model view controller framework. It, it would be the model where um, you, your data is um, locally stored. So in a model view framework, um, in an MVC framework, you can have sub MVC frameworks within it. Uh, so this would be one of those um, sub uh, models um, within the the um, MVC because typically um, the this entire thing this application um, because it's talking to a database on the back end we would call this the view and we would call the database here the Firebase the model um, and the controller would actually probably be a view um, doing a lot of the control mechanisms so. Um, but within view, it kind of has its own little global storage database, and that's what um, the uh, ViewX store is. And um, the ViewX store is, is, again, a place that I can put stuff that I can call from all my different um, views. So let's take a look at the application here. This is one view here. This is another view here. They're two different components, but they might share data. Now, I'm not doing that directly here, um, and I haven't gotten that far into my application, but you can see that um, if we're looking at the client here, so um, this is the client view uh, that the router loads, so the router knows to load um, this client view by looking at um, the, um, the object here in, in the router object. Um, it knows that when the path is client with a client um, parameter with, with an ID, a variable, and this is, tells me which client to load, um, you know, load the client component, and that client component comes from up here, the component's client. So that's this view here, which outputs this form. Um, so uh, back to the global storage idea, um, I'm actually in my form, where do I get the data from? Well, this Terry name came from somewhere. Um, it actually came from, um, in the form, the form knows uh, that, you know, Terry is this, um, this object here, or this, this string that's part of this, this long object. Where did this object come from? This is, this is displaying it, but where did it come from? Well, um, current primary relative caregiver is a, um, a, a computed property, it's, it's, it's a, a data element that I uh, return to this uh, thing to display, but it comes from my global storage. So I can reach out to the global storage and say, hey, uh, give me the current um, primary relative caregiver object so that I can display it to the user. So that way, um, and, and I'm not doing it right here, but I could have different views um, if I wanted to show maybe that last primary caregiver on this dashboard page, the last one that was accessed, um, I don't have to ask for the data uh, again um, from storage. I can store it locally in my global storage and then just call it from my component that would show up here. Um, and so the data doesn't live in, in, in any particular component. It lives up in the storage object so I can call it from all my different places that are that are showing um, you know, different stuff to the, to the, um, to the user. So um, this, uh, this call to the storage um, invokes, uh, actually just calls, I'm actually just directly calling the object um, from here. And so we'll get into later how that object gets populated. And it actually gets populated by um, the um, Firestore. So when I, um, when I get the, the, the prime, current primary relative caregiver, I'm actually getting it from the Firestore. And that's a whole, that's another video that we'll talk about um, as far as you're concerned and, and following these in order uh, uh, later on. We'll talk about the Firestore um, populating these objects. But 
the um, you know as far as the client is concerned, the client view, it is pulling um, you know a global variable uh, and, and displaying it. Now I'm I'm actually kind of cheating here. Um, this is not great practice. If somebody that um, knows what they're doing was to look at this, they would say, hey. Um, uh, you really shouldn't um, be manipulating the um, the global storage object directly. Um, so when somebody changes this, so we're in this page with the primary caregiver. Here's primary caregiver, and here's primary caregiver. When I put change this name and I click submit, um, I'm actually this V model is actually working directly on the storage object and you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to use mutations um, to to change these variables and it works um, it's working right now but you can see that if I submit this to Terry 2 and it did change everywhere so it's 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 changed in my application but view X the the debugging tool because I'm not calling the mutation it doesn't know that a changed happened so um, if I look at the object here, um, it still thinks that the name is Terry. It hasn't been uh, updated. So this is actually for more for debugging, using the proper techniques to call, um, uh, you know, your storage object, your, your local database, if you will. Um, it needs to be done in a certain way so that when you go to try and track your problems and figure out what's wrong, why things aren't working, you're not you're getting updated information and your your storage object is not lying. The storage object actually is this. It just hasn't been updated because I updated the uh, the um, storage object directly um, without telling ViewX, hey, go and update your you know your your mechanisms to show me what's actually happening. And that's why we use mutations. And actions are actually um, asynchronous calls so that they can show up in your events timeline in the right order because an asynchronous call could take, let's say the server was bogged down and it took 30 seconds for the call actually to finish. Um, so this doesn't all happen real time. This call is made to the server. If the server takes 30 seconds to respond, this stuff isn't called until that response happens. Um, so the, the location doesn't change until that happens in this instance. Um, so um, you know that, that's asynchronous activity and we want that to happen in an action so that um, it shows up in the right order here and that's getting pretty deep but um, just know that so the storage it, it's a it's kind of like a local global um, database that allows you to um, you know retrieve and share data between your different views without having to to again call make calls back to the main um, database um, and, and, and share um, parameters between um, different um, different views of the of the of states of the um, you know the the, the front end. Um, so that that's kind of a again a very high level. Just trying to introduce you to um, the different components and and kind of where they fit. Um, I realize that if you're if you're coming into this totally green, you're probably not understanding a lot of this. So it, it, if nothing else, you know, I just want you to be understanding that, that you have all these different components that you can work with that come together to make an application. And, and once you learn the different components, um, it really makes your life easy because um, things are just single calls rather than doing 30, 40 lines of, of programming. Um, you know, you're just making one simple call to, to one of these objects and it does the work for you. So you're not reinventing the wheel. Um, so, uh, again, this is, I'm recording this video out of order. So, um, your next, uh, uh video will be whatever it ends up happening to be. Um, have a great day. Uh, enjoy, uh, programming and, uh, check out dedicated managers if you get a chance.